In this video, we are going to discuss uh, this problem called count subarrays with median k. So the problem says that we will be given with an array of size n, which will contain values from 1 to n and all values will be distinct. That means we will be given with the permutation of n numbers starting from 1 to n, right? And we have to find out the subarrays containing median equals to a given value k. So there are two words in this uh, problem. First one is this subarray and the second one is median, right? So let us first talk about uh, median. So median is the middle element uh, if we sort our data. If the length is odd then the middle element will be the median and if uh, length is even then uh, the left middle element will be the median. For example, let's say we have uh, this array, let's say 1, 3, 2. So now if we just sort this then we'll get 1, 2, 3. So the middle element will be the median in this case. Uh, because the length is odd. Now let's say we have an array of uh, size which is even. Let's say 1, 3, 4, 2. Now if we sort this data then we'll get 1, 2, 3 and 4. So now we have two elements which are uh, in the middle, 2 and 3. So the left middle element will be the median. So 2 will be the median in this case also and in this case also. Okay. So this is median. So now if we just look at some of the properties of median then we can say that uh, in this case, the number of elements which are smaller than 2 must be equals to the number of elements which are greater than 2. If we want 2 as the median, if the length is odd, right? So if we just say that the number of elements which are great, uh, greater than 2 are equals to G and the number of elements smaller than 2 are smaller than uh, is equals to S, in that case we can say G should be equals to S, right? Or uh, in this case, if we say that the number of elements which are greater than 2 are 1 greater than the number of elements which are smaller than 2. So, we can, if we just denote it by G and if we denote it by S, then we can say either this condition should be followed if we want 2 as a median or this condition should be followed. G minus 1 should be equals to S. Right. Now we know that uh, one of these two conditions should be followed if we want or some number to be a median right so now let us talk about subarrays so we have to count the subarrays which are having k uh, which will be given to us as a median so if we want k as a median first that subarray should contain k right so there will be an n square number of subarrays then there will be some number of subarrays which will contain k then there will be some number of subarrays which will have k as a median. So let us first talk about uh, the subarrays which will contain k, right? So let's say, so see, uh, the all the elements are distinct, right? So k will be present at only one particular index. So let's say k is present at uh, ith index, right? Now we will have uh, index till i n minus one and till starting from zero, right? So now we can say that uh, all the subarrays which will start from one of these indexes between 0 to i and will have a ending index between i to n minus 1 will contain k for sure. For example, let's say we have uh, this thing 3, 2, 1, 6, 5, 4, right? So let's say this is the array which is given to us. Now if we want 1 to be a part of a subarray, then that subarray can start from 3 and and at any of these indices, right? Similarly, uh, a subarray starting from 2 and ending at one of these indices will also contain 2 and similarly and so on, right? So we can say that generically this will be true that uh, starting index should be between 0 to i and ending index be uh, should be between i to n minus 1 if we want ith element to be a part of a subarray, right? Okay. Now, based on these two observations, we can say that uh, we can come up with all the subarrays which are following this property and then we can check that how many of those subarrays follow one of these two properties, right? And then we can count those. So let's say the starting index will start from 0 and it will iterate till i. So s equal to 0 and it will go up till i, right? And similarly, the ending index will start from i and it will iterate till n minus 1, right? Now using these two nested for loops, we can say for sure that every subarray which will be represented by S and E, right? That subarray starting from S and ending at E will contain K for sure. 
Now we want to find out that how many subarrays out of those follow one of these two conditions, right? So for that, what we can do is we can have a count variable or a difference variable. Let's say diff. Initially, it will be zero. And now we can find out the difference between starting and ending. So let's say for this property, g greater minus smaller can be equals to zero, right? So both of these equations are same. G equal to equal to s or g minus s equal to zero. And this uh, property can be written as g minus s equals to one, right? So if we maintain the difference between greater elements and smaller elements, and if the difference is equal to zero or one, in both the cases, the subarray will have k as a median, right? So we can maintain that difference between this variable. So let's say we have a function which can return us the difference between greater and smaller elements for a given subarray. So let's say get difference. We have this function and in this function should return us the difference between greater and smaller elements uh, in this given subarray starting from s index and ending at e index. Right? So if this difference is equals to 0 or this difference is equals to 1 in both the cases we can say that the current subarray starting from s and ending at e will represent uh, will have k as a median so in that case we can increment our counter right we can have a counter starting from 0 right so this uh, this logic will work but the only problem with this logic is that the time complexity of this will be order of n square right and according to constraints it will not uh, it will give us TLE, right so now we want to optimize so now we want to optimize then let us see that what we are actually doing in our brute force approach so in our brute force approach we are fixing a starting index let's say some index s then we are iterating over all the possible ending index and then we are checking whether this property is being followed or not right this is what we are doing in brute force and we are getting uh, n square time complexity because we are iterating over all the possible ending indices right so let us see if we can do something better than this now let us say that uh, for the starting index we got some ending index then we want to check whether this property is being followed or not so let us just look at these properties so we want either g minus s should be equals to 0 or it should be equals to 1 right okay so g is the number of elements which are greater than k right and s is the number of elements which are smaller than k right so in this portion all uh, sorry from starting in this portion from s to k s to i and from i to e in both the portions we will get some number of elements which will be smaller and we will get some number of elements which will be greater so let's say in this portion starting from s index and ending at one i index we got uh, g1 g1 number of elements which are greater than k and we got s1 number of elements which which are smaller than k right in this portion then we got uh, g2 number of elements which are greater than k in this second portion and we got s2 number of elements which are smaller than k in this portion okay cool now this g is the num total number of elements which are greater than k so we can say that g will be equals to g1 plus g2 because g1 is the number of elements which are greater than k in this second po uh, in the left portion and g2 is the number of elements which are greater in the right portion right so total number of elements which are greater than k will be equals to g1 plus g2 and the total number of elements which are smaller than k will be equals to s1 plus s2 right and we want this difference so we can subtract this thing and this thing should be equals to either 0 or 1 right this is what we want okay now if we just rearrange this equation then we can also write it as g1 minus s1 plus g2 minus s2 right and this thing should be either equal to 0 or 1 right and what is this expression this expression represents the difference between elements which are greater uh, and smaller in the left portion and this expression represents the difference between number of elements which are greater and smaller in this right portion right so let's say this uh, let's represent this difference by d1 and let's uh, represent this difference by d2 
So we can say that d1 plus d2 should be either equals to 0 or it should be equals to 1, right? Now if we uh, just consider this uh, as two equations, let's say d1 plus d2 equals to 0. In this case we can say that uh, d2 should be equals to minus of d1. And if we just consider the second equation with 1 then we can say that uh, if we say that d1 plus d2 should be equals to 1 in that case d2 is equals to 1 minus d1 right okay now let's say if we are at a random index s right and we know the difference between greater and smaller elements from this index and ending at uh, starting from s and ending at i so for this portion we know the difference between greater and smaller element that means we know d1 now if we know d1 then we will be only interested in those subarrays which have a difference equals to 1 minus d1 or equals to 0 minus d1 also we can write it right so if we know this d1 then we just want to find out that how many ending indices have values or difference equals to 1 minus d1 or 0 minus d1 right so we just want to know the count of subarrays having this difference so can we use some data structure which can help us in storing and uh, retrieving data or the count of uh, subarrays having this particular value or this particular value. So we can use hash map or uh, unordered map. right? So what we can do is we can uh, store the difference of greater elements minus smaller elements from the right portion in the map and then while iterating over the or possible starting indices we can look for this difference in the map and we can just uh, increase our counter according to the number of ending indices having these values right so let me just write a pseudo code for this so first of all what we will do is we will we want to store the difference of greater minus smaller elements in the right portion so what we will do uh, let's say we will start from i plus 1 we will go till n minus 1 right and let's say we have this variable called difference in which we will store the difference. So initially it will be 0. Then if we encounter a value which is greater than k, in that case what we want? We want to increase this because this difference is equals to greater minus smaller. So if we encounter an element which is greater then we, we need to increment 1 to this difference. So difference plus plus. Otherwise, we know for sure that we will encounter an element which is smaller than k. So in that case, we can say that we want to reduce this thing because smaller element should be is after minus 1. So we need to reduce 1 if we encounter an element which is smaller than k. Right. So after this, we can uh, we can have a map. Let's say we have a map called right. Uh, unordered map in that in this we will store this thing and we'll increment the counter that we encountered this difference right okay and uh, we will also store 0 0 plus plus because i is an ending index where difference will be 0 it will be neither plus 1 or minus 1 right so when we are considering i as an ending index for that we have to store this right of 0 is equals to plus plus right Z right of 0 plus plus all right so this is how we can store the difference uh, this d2 values of d2 in the map now what we can do is we can iterate from uh, i minus 1 and we can move to the left side uh, while considering the starting points and we can st uh, calculate the difference in the same way that we have calculated here and after calculating a difference then we can simply look for these two values right so let me just write it here so let's say the difference again is equals to 0 and now we are going to iterate uh, from s is equals to i minus 1 and we are going to go till 0 right now the same logic will come here if we encounter sorry if we encounter a of s which is greater than k in that case we need to increment our difference right Otherwise, we know for sure that we will encounter a value which is smaller than k. In that case, we need to reduce our difference. Okay. Now, after this, what we have to do is we know that this difference is representing d1. 
and if it is representing d1 then we are interested in a value which is having 1 minus d1 value or 0 minus d1 so what we can do is we can find out the number of elements which are having this value 1 minus d1 using this right of uh, right of 1 minus difference right these many elements have uh, these many elements have value equals to 1 minus difference so we can simply increase our counter by this much value because the for uh, this part, uh, this starting point we will have these many ending indices right similarly we can look for we can look for zero minus difference so write zero minus difference and at the end we can simply run count so this is the code for this so now the time and space complexity for this would be the order of n because we are doing nothing but iterating from i plus 1 to n minus 1 and then i minus 1 to 0 so the number of iterations will be order of n in com uh, if we combine both of them the number of iterations will be n and in all the iterations we are doing order of one work right so the overall time complexity will be order of n and the space complexity will also be order of n because of these maps okay cool so that's all for uh, this video and i'll see you in the next one